ngayong biyernes sa DOST Report. Para sa pagkapatuloy ng seri ng parayang ngayong buwan ng Pebrero na may temang SND Services for the People. Tatalakay natin ang mga servisyo ng Department of Science and Technology na nakatutulong sa pagpapalaganap ng Science and Technology Information upang mapukaw ang kaisipan ng mga Pilipino sa kahalagahan ng siyensya at teknolohiya sa pang-araw-araw nating maumuhay. Makasama natin sina Director Richard P. Burgos, ang Director ng DOST Science and Technology Information Institute at si Dr. Cesar A. Saloma, ang Editor-in-Chief ng Philippine Journal of Science. Alamin yan at iba pang Science for the People Projects ng Department of Science and Technology mula mismo kay DOST Secretary Fortunato Boy de la Peña. Pakatutukan natin yan sa DOST Report tuwing biyernes alas 4 ng hapon sa DOST Facebook page at YouTube channel. Magandang araw Pilipinas kay po'y nakatutok sa DOST Report ang programa una sa mga balita tungkol sa GAM teknolohiya at inovasyon para sa bayan. Ako po ang inyong kapatid sa Ibabuid, Oling Miranda, at kasama rin po natin ang kalihin ng kagawaran ng agama at teknolohiya ang nag-iisang DOST Secretary Fortunato, Boy de la Peña. Magandang agam po si Boy. Magandang araw din sa iyo, Onin, at magandang araw sa ating mga taga-subaybay. Kanatapos naman po ng araw na mga puso pero hindi po dyan nagtatapos ang pagpapakita natin ng pagmahal sa kapwa, sa bayan at sa gap. Nandiyan pa rin po ang 4K report ni Secretary Boy Mbamia at sa ating panayam na may temang SNT Services for the People. Ating po mag-uusapan ng mga serbisyo ng DOST at palaganapin ang informasyon na sa siyensya at teknolohiya para higit na maunumaan at palagahan ng ating mga kababayan. Abangan po niyo yan, pero sa ngayon, makibalita muna tayo sa latest news tungkol sa agama teknolohiya mula kay Secretary Boy. Katulad ng dati, ay uh, uh, iuulat ko ngayon ang highlights ng aming accomplishments sa DOST. Uh, sa, sa mga ahensya namin at uh, magsisimula tayo sa kalusugan, susundan ng uh, report sa kabuhayan, um, kaayusan at uh, kinabukasan. The first report is coming from the DOST Philippine Council for Health Research and Development that uh, together with the University of San Carlos, they are developing test beds for low-cost ventilation systems for tropical indoor environments to reduce transmission of airborne viruses. The DOST PCHRD is supporting a project that uh, aims to develop and demonstrate the effectiveness of a low-cost ventilator system for tropical indoor environments to curb the further spread of airborne viruses. Specifically, it will redesign the low-cost ventilator system in collaboration with its inventor, Dr. Frank Helles of the Max Planck Institute of Chemistry in Mainz, Germany. And uh, they will modify it to fit indoor tropical environments in the Philippines. The research being implemented by the University of San Carlos in Cebu through the leadership of Dr. Edward Kericholm in collaboration with the Max Planck Institute of Chemistry in uh, Mainz, uh, Germany. The second uh, report comes from our DOST Food and Nutrition Research uh, Institute. And uh, this is about their uh, launching of the orange and purple sweet potato variants of their e nutriban The DOST FNRI launched virtually on February 16 the purple and orange sweet potato variants of the enhanced Nutriban. Like the three earlier variants, these uh, e Nutribans are excellent sources of fiber, energy, protein, iron, calcium, potassium, and zinc. The launch also serve as a call to all entrepreneurs, prospects, technology adapters, and other stakeholders to adopt the technology 
and continue to be partners in the fight against the country's malnutrition problems and to contribute to the government's efforts towards zero hunger. Uh, the, uh, remember that uh, the initial variants were uh, uh, those of uh, squash, carrot, and the uh, yellow uh, sweet potato variant. The next report is uh, still on Kalusugan, and this comes from uh, US Division 10, uh, reporting that they have partnered with the Ligan City Local Government Unit to uh, give all our support to the DOST Food and Nutrition Research Institute expanded national nutrition survey in the region. DOST 10 and LGU Higan City has uh, uh, partnered to support the DOST FNRI, uh, particularly in their expanded national nutrition survey. And um, uh, recall that in uh, July 2021, data collection presumed that there were only 19 areas that were covered out of the 37 provinces and highly urbanized cities. So in illegal city, FNRI will be covering the 38 identified barangays with a total of 1,615 households and 138 enumerators. Data collection started last February 8th, and uh, the target is to end this on March 21, 2022. This is to generate local level estimates for the city as vital inputs for illegal's local nutrition program planning. Moreover, survey results will be used to determine the possible effects of the pandemic on the health and nutrition status of the population. The fourth report comes from DOST uh, Region 2, uh, announcing that they were given a 966,600 peso grant by the Department of Health Region 2 uh, for a uh, study to assess health literacy in the Cagayan Valley area. So the research proposal of the University of Cagayan Valley is now ready to take off after the DOST, DOH Region 2 awarded this 966,400 fund through the Cagayan Valley Health Research and Development Consortium, which is chaired by the DOST Region 2. The title of the project is Assessment of Health Literacy and Health Seeking Behavior of the Residents of Cagayan Province. The research will run for a year and will focus on the priority areas of DOST and DOH, which include mental health, substance abuse, sexual and reproductive health, and safety and inclusivity. It will provide recommendations to the Department of Health and the local government units to improve the quality of life and health status of the people in Cagayan province. Now we shift to Kabuhayan. The first report comes from our DOST Calabarzon uh, saying that the three OFW tech-based startups under the DOST I Forward PH program received already their innovation fund to start their business operations. And uh, this is coming from DOST Calabarzon. Under DOST's Calabarzon uh, implementation of the DOST Innovations for Filipinos Working Distantly from the Philippines, or I4WPH program, three technology-based startups initiated by uh, returning OFWs from the region uh, received already their uh, IFAN support after completing the capacity building phase of the program. The projects are the following. The first one is upgrading of products and services of the Laguna-based ICT Enterprise Cogito Solutions Incorporated. The second one is the technology updating of Jet Steelworks Complicated Metals Factoring Production Facility in Batangas. And the third one is technology upgrading of Gara Garments Manufacturing also in Batangas. Nine other project proposals are under revision, review, and approval for their I-funding application. It appears that the three projects here 
are not exactly startups, but uh, are already operational, uh, owned by the OFWs that we have uh, mentioned. Under item, uh, the next item, we have uh, a report from DOSD Region 8 reporting their uh, science and technology-based projects in marginalized communities of Biliran province. So DOSD Region 8 has turned over project funds amounting from 500,000 to the local government unit of Naval uh, during the second livelihood summit held on February 9, 2022. The fund is intended to support the livelihood development, food sufficiency and nutrition projects of Biliran under the Community Empowerment through Science and Technology Program of uh, DOST. Uh, the Biliran Province State University will also provide uh, a counterpart amounting to 100,000, while the local government unit will share an amount of 650,000, particularly for the uh, facility uh, and also a portion of the maintenance and operating uh, uh, expenses community will benefit from the Starbucks that will be given by the DOST uh, for the benefit of the students in the area. The next report comes from DOST Picard, and this is about the signing of a memorandum of understanding and cooperation with the Management Association of the Philippines and the Asian Institute of uh, Management. They have signed uh, the project uh, entitled Agri-Aqua Innovation Challenge. AIM and the DOS Card have actually uh, been partners already in supporting Filipino innovations throughout the years, innovations and innovator. The partnership in the Leaders in Innovation Fellowship Program primed researchers to translate their technologies into products and services to benefit more Filipinos. On the other hand, the Management Association of the Philippines and the Asian Institute of Management has been collaborating or have been collaborating since 1992 to propagate excellence in management education through its management education uh, workshops. This year, the three institutions, uh, DOS, Card, MAP, and AIM are collaborating to address the agri aqua challenges by empowering Filipinos to be part of the solution to the agri aqua innovation challenge. The partnership hopes to create a platform where industry, academic, and government will work together to advance the national development of the Philippines by supporting startups to better manage their business and enhance their innovation journey by empowering student teams to translate their technologies into products and services that will benefit the Filipino and by enabling educational institutions to become hotbeds of innovation. The next report comes uh, also from DOST Calabarzon, and uh, this is regarding the assistance that uh, they have given to the Agricultural Machinery Testing Center, or AMTEC, uh, of UP Los Baños. Uh, the specific uh, assistance given was in the uh, conduct of machine testing and evaluation of the pineapple decorticator, which was uh, designed and developed by engineer Dick Ola, of ranking enterprises. The machine testing took place last February 1, 2022 at the machine shop of engineer Ola at uh, uh, St. Mary Homes in Mulilo, Bacoor, Cavite. The testing was conducted in response to the recommendation of the DOST Philippine Textile Research Institute or PTRI to have a certified government testing center that can evaluate the fiber decorticator of Rankin Enterprises prior to procurement of the machine by San Pablo City Pineapple Farmers Entrepreneurs Association. This is to ensure that the quality of fibers to be produced shall conform to the standards of the Philippine Textile Research Institute. The Agricultural Machinery Testing and Evaluation Center or AMTEC team was headed by engineer Ray Mark Albalos and assisted by Mr. Joel R. So Riau. Uh, engineer Ola first explained the safety features of the machine and demonstrated the use of the equipment and functions of its components. The decorticating machine can be used for several types of fibers, such as abaca, banana barks, pineapple leaves, and water hyacinth. Its function was carefully explained, such as the start buttons, uh, 
the adjusters, the brakes or stops, and the emergency uh, buttons. DOST Laguna actually continues to support uh, community projects uh, through the DOST Calabarzon's uh, Grants in Aid uh, program, and uh, this is uh, uh, one of those projects. Now, uh, we will move over to DOST Mimaropa. Uh, the report says spray dried calamansi is now available in Oriental Mindoro through DOST Mimaropa's Agriprenur Incubator located in Victoria, Oriental Mindoro. To help in creating additional value for Calamansi, DOST Mimaropa, through its Provincial Science and Technology Office in Oriental Mindoro, conducted an optimization uh, uh, study of the spray dried Calamansi, wherein the personnel from the Provincial Agricultural Agriculturist Office were taught on the standard processes of producing spray dried Calamansi last uh, January 27, 2022. As we know, Oriental Mindoro accounts for 99% of the supply of calamansi in the region and is also known as the main producer in the Philippines with 59% of the country's total calamansi production coming from the Maropa. So this uh, project intends to address the consequences of oversupply of calamansi uh, in the province, most especially during peak uh, season. And based on the results of the optimization trials, wherein a batch of 20 liters of calamansi extract uh, was found to produce six kilograms of uh, spray dried uh, calamansi. Uh, aside from calamansi, trials were also made on spray dried stevia and uh, blue ternate with lemongrass, okay? uh, which also showed promising uh, results. The spray drying facility was installed by uh, DOST at the Agripreneur Incubator located uh, within the premises of the provincial demo farm in Merit, Victoria, Oriental, Mindoro. The next report, also on Kabuhaya, comes from our DOST Philippine Council for Industry, Energy, and Emerging Technologies, R&D, and uh, uh, shared together with the DOST National Capital Region, or uh, NCR, uh, has uh, uh, joined hands to support the DOST Miriam College uh, program called Partners in Innovating Resilient Startups, or what they call the PAIRS project. So DOST NCR, alongside with DOST Fisher, and together with selected startups and long-standing businesses, actually uh, served as panelists during the Miriam College uh, Technology Business Incubator Virtual Demo Day uh, uh, which uh, was held last February 10, 2022. The incubation program actually is entitled The Nursery, okay? And it is an incubation program that forms part of DOST, NCR, and uh, Miriam College's uh, joint project in uh, the Partners in Innovating Resilient Startups or Pairs. Uh, the said project focuses on the promotion of government initiatives that support women-led technology startups and entrepreneurs. Now we move over to Kaayusan. The first report uh, comes from DOST Calabarzon, which has uh, uh, launched uh, the use of uh, what they call modular ecology-friendly domestic wastewater treatment system, or MEDOW. Uh, and this was uh, first launched in Anilao, Pabini, Batangas. The DOST Calabarzon kicked off the establishment of the Modular Ecology Friendly Domestic Wastewater Treatment System, or the Meadow System, in Anilao, Pabini, Batangas, last February 9, 2022. The establishment of this uh, uh, Meadow Treatment System aims to improve the wastewater management of three major sites in Anilao, Mabini, Batangas. Uh, the Municipal Tourism Office, Anilao's uh, port, uh, Anilao Ports, Public Comfort Room, and the Anilao Market. Since Mabini, Batangas is known for its encouraging tourism because of its natural wonders, which are part of the world's center uh, for marine shore fish biodiversity, a large influx of tourists is recorded uh, at any time of the year. So the adoption of, meadow, of the meadow treatment system technology 
is one of the OST Calabarzon's answers to the call of the LGU of Pabini, uh, Batangas for science technology-based solutions to mitigate the environmental pollution brought about by untreated wastewater. The next report is uh, coming from uh, the BOST National Capital Region and the BOST National Technology Development Institute. And uh, this is uh, just in, form, in the form of bringing the uh, ITDI's dual drum composer technology to Payatas, Quezon City. This is, uh, of course, a very thickly populated uh, portion of Quezon City. So the DOST NCR and the DOST ITDI has uh, introduced this and conducted a three-day training for the designated operators of the dual drum composer at the materials recovery facility of Barangay Payatas, Quezon City. This was held last February 4, 7, and 10, 2022. The event uh, was aimed at capacitating the community operators on the proper operation and maintenance of the dual drum composter. Moreover, the dual drum composter was handed over to the community as part of the OSTNCR's um, uh, project entitled Improving the Waste Management Operations of Pamamazon uh, Com Community Empowerment to Science and Technology uh, Areas and then, of course, our Community Empowerment to Science and Technology, or CESTA, program. Then we have a report from DOS Region 12. Uh, so as, as we know, uh, DOS Region 12 has been focusing on the provision of uh, accessible water supply to uh, isolated areas in their uh, region. And uh, this time, uh, the site of their Community Empowerment to Science and Technology program are in uh, the towns of Lunan, uh, Cotabato, and in Makilala, uh, Cotabato. So these are the, the latest areas where they are, uh, where they have put up uh, the hydraulic ramp pumps uh, to provide the water to the isolated areas. Next report is coming from DOS the Region 1, and uh, this is regarding their project uh, involving the calibration okay, of uh, uh, weighing scales in particular. And uh, so they held a calibration caravan in Burgos, Pangasinan in support of Operation Timbang for the, for the town's nutrition uh, program. So DOST Region 1 uh, through the uh, UST Provincial Science and Technology Center of Pangasinan uh, implemented this calibration caravan in the town of uh, Burgos. And uh, uh, this is really in support of uh, uh, the requirements of the National Nutrition Council okay, regarding Operation uh, Timbang. Okay? So this, is, uh, this involved uh, uh, 23 units of uh, uh, scales that were uh, calibrated uh, for the use of uh, 14 barangays and also by the Rural Health Unit and the Nutrition Office of Burgos. The next report uh, comes from DOS, the ITDI, and uh, this is about their, their completion of, a, of studies on benzopenone exposure assessment from paper-based food and beverage packaging. The DOST Industrial Technology Development Institute, or ITDI, through their packaging technology division, implemented a project entitled Exposure Assessment of Filipino Consumers to Benzopenones migrated from paper and paperboard used as packaging for food and beverages. The project aimed to estimate the exposure of consumers to benzophenone from paper food packaging uh, in Metro Manila, as benzophenone has been widely used as a photo initiator uh, for inks and varnishes lockers uh, that are cured with ultraviolet light since the 1980s. The exposure assessment survey was administered to 523 Filipino consumers in Metro Manila. Participants were within the 13 to 40 years of age and residents of a particular city in Metro Manila for at least a year. Based on the survey, bread is still popular among participants with most of the participants eating it at least three times a week while the pizza was not consumed more than three times a month. The packaging materials tested include brown bags for bread, pizza box, 
bucket box, paper cups for beverages, and paper straws. The results showed that the maximum calculated exposure would yield no observed acute toxicity. However, combined exposure from other paper packaging materials theoretically implies that at least 50% risk level okay, uh, is uh, rich and uh, uh, this pertains to uh, a lifetime uh, risk of cancer, uh, 1 times 10 to the minus 6. The study recommended expanding the coverage of the exposure assessment survey from Metro Manila uh, to nationwide. The next uh, reports will be on Kinabukasan. Uh, the first one is a report from the DOST Science and Technology Information Institute or STII uh, saying that uh, uh, the latest expert talk online uh, in their uh, DOS TV features uh, a balik scientist assigned at the Food and Drug Administration. So DOS STII uh, featured Dr. Fidela Moreno, an independent balik scientist of DOST PCHRT, or the Philippine Council for Health Research and Development, who is currently doing work with the Food and Drug Administration. Uh, at Expert Talk Online, she discussed and answered the questions being raised regarding clinical trials and how uh, it, it has been made easier and available in the Philippines. Dr. Moreno added the need to closely monitor trials without shortcuts and that ethical and safety issues and guidelines are not circumvented. The episode was uploaded last February 9, 2022. The next report is uh, coming from the new SDGRSS. GRSS stands for uh, God and Regional Support Service. God means gender and development. And uh, this is regarding the holding of uh, the International Day of Women and Girls in uh, Science. Uh, this was uh, uh, done last February 11, 2022. Uh, the virtual activity was uh, uh, another gender mainstreaming initiative of DOST to recognize the contribution of women and girls to science and to strengthen their participation to achieve their full and equal access to science, gender equality, and empowerment. There were three competent resource speakers who intelligently discussed their assigned topic. Her Excellency Lenny Rosaline, the chair of the ASEAN Commission on Women and the Deputy Minister for Gender Equality, Ministry of Women's Empowerment and Child Protection of Indonesia, discussed the theme of the forum. Ms. Hilary Diane Andales, a Philippine Science High School Eastern Science Campus alumna who is currently studying at Massachusetts Institute of Technology and a rising science communicator, encouraged the participants with her amazing experiences as a woman and how she overcome, uh, overcame all struggles. And the last one is Dr. Marietta Banya Sumagaysay, the Executive Director of the National Research Council of the Philippines, and she presented how to mainstream gender in science and technology uh, research. Uh, total of 2,611 participants from Zoom and Facebook Live uh, joined uh, the online forum. Last but not least, uh, still on Kinabukasan, the DOST ASTI or the DOST Advanced Science Technology Institute reported that their space technology team bagged the encouragement award at the second Hitachi Global Foundation Asia Innovation Award for 2021. Uh, this award was actually launched only in 2020 and it aims to promote science, technology, and innovation that contributes to solving social issues and realizing a sustainable society in the ASEAN region. It recognizes individuals and groups that undeniably serve public interest through their outstanding achievements in research and development in the fields of science and technology, including their visions of an ideal future society and social implementation plans for R&D as a means of achieving the sustainable development goals. R&D achievements from 21 universities and research institutes in six Asian countries, including the Philippines, which contribute to selected targets of uh, goal 14, life below water, 
and Goal 15 Life on Land vied for the award. The DOST ASTI team submitted the research entitled Space-Based Management and Monitoring System for Watershed Protection, uh, which aims to develop a satellite-based monitoring system for forest and watershed resource management that will enable access to innovation on technologies through remote sensing and geospatial analysis. Keeping pace with Sustainable Development Goals or SDGs, DOST, Advanced Science and Technology Institute, along with its partner agencies, forged a collaboration for data gathering, data sharing, strategic assessment, mapping initiatives, and forest and watershed preservation. The partnerships seek to integrate hazard maps and uh, uh, data appropriate for forest and watershed uh, monitoring, as well as aquaculture mapping, such as the fish ponds, fish cages, fish pens, seaweeds, oysters, and mussels farm site uh, management, employing remote sensing and geospatial analysis. Uh, that ends my uh, report for this week coming from our DOST agencies and uh, offices. Maraming salamat at uh, sana ay nakapulot kayo ng mga bago mahalagang informasyon uh, sa aming mga report na accomplishment highlights. Maraming salamat po, Sekboy. Natungin po ninyo ang kabuuan ng DOST updates para sa nagdang linggo. Sa aming pagbalik, pag-uusapan naman natin ang servisyong binibigay ng DOST upang palaganapin ng science and technology information sa bansa. Makasama po natin ang mga namumuno sa DOST Science and Technology Information Institute at Philippine Journal of Science sa pagbalik po yan ng DOST Report. Kayo po'y nakatutok sa DOST Report. Nandito na po tayo sa ikalawang bahagi ng ating programa, Ang Palayam with Sekboy. At para sa buwan ng Pebrero, pag-uusapan po natin ang mga scientific and technical services o mga serbisyo ng Department of Science and Technology na nakatutulong sa mga palaganap ng science and technology information upang mapukaw ang kaisipan ng mga Pilipino sa kahalagahan ng siyensya at teknolohiya sa pang-araw-araw natin ba umuhay. Tama ka, Onin. Nung nakaraang dalawang linggo, ang pinag-usapan natin, una, yung ating uh, kahandaan para sa kalamidan. Kaya ang ating mga uh, panauhin ay mula sa pag-asa at sa pibol. Kasi nung mga nagdaang linggo, ang pinag-ukulan natin ng pansin ay ang mga ginagawa natin sa DOST na may kinalaman sa education or human resource development. Kaya ang ating panauhin noon ay ang uh, uh, mga direktor ng uh, Science Education Institute at ang direktor ng Philippine Science High School System. Ngayon naman, ang pagtutunan natin ng pansin ay ang information dissemination about science and technology at ito ay napakahalaga. Opo, Sekboy. Para tulungan tayo sa usaping ito, makasama po natin sina Director Richard P. Burgos, Director, DOST, Science and Technology Information Institute, Dr. Cesar A. Saloma, Editor-in-Chief, Philippine Journal of Science. Maganda araw po sa inyo. Umpisa na natin ang panayam sa Science uh, and Technology Information Institute na napakahalaga ng papel na ginagampanan uh, sa ating pagpapalaganap ng informasyon. Uh, uh, magandang araw sa iyo, Director uh, Richard Burgos. Magandang araw, Sekboy, at uh, 
isang pagkakataon ito para maliwanagan natin ang mga audience natin kung paano ba nag-communicate ang DOST. Maganda araw po, Director Richard. Ang DOST-STII po, may tatlong mandato. Ito ay to establish a science and technology data bank and library to disseminate science and technology information, to undertake training on science and technology information. At ayon po sa datos na lumabas mula 2017, ay patuloy na tumataas sa SNT awareness sa Pilipinas sa nakaraang taong 2021. Director Richard, ano po ang mga inisyatibo ng DOST STII para patuloy na mabataas ito? At salamat sa question, Onin. Alam mo, dapat 2016, 2016 pa natin umpisahan yung ating reckoning kasi noon wala tayong benchmark, wala tayong index. Na? So in 2017, we started no, organizing and uh, working with SWS at nagkaroon tayo ng 6% awareness level across the nation. Napakababa po niyan. We determined that we will more, double that in the next year. So in 2018, nagkaroon tayo ng 13%. Tumaas po yan hanggang sa 24.5% as of end of last year. So, more than four times no, since we started, ang taas po ng, ang taas ng awareness level about science and technology in the country. Right? So ano pa ang mga, ano pang ginawa namin para mapataas ito? Well, traditionally, we have our own publications, S&T Post, all right, the DOST Digest, Balitang Rapidos, and all of these things. But uh, right now, I think the biggest weapon that we have is to go on social media. Kasi kung wala tayo sa social media, walang makakarilig sa atin, lalong-lalo na yung mga kabataan. All right? So, ang ating online presence, okay, has exceeded, all right, for DOST Philippines uh, Facebook page, has exceeded 19.71 million audience reach. Ang laki na po yan. Ang DOS TV, 76.5 million po ang reach niyan. Alright? So, uh, patuloy tayo na nagiging present at uh, naririnig sa social media at tinatangkilik naman po ito ng ating mga kababayan. Yung DOS TV, before 2016, wala po yan. Mayroong studio, walang nagaganap. Alright? So, in 2016, we started producing content and uh, today, what can we say? And dami na po nating segments. Meron tayong DOS to report, kagaya nito. Meron tayong expert talk online every Wednesday. And by tayong vulkan, pag merong uh, alboroto yung mga vulkan natin in the country, all right, usually Thursday siya lumalabas. At meron din tayo sa mainstream media, CNC Cut on CNN every Saturday and Sunday, 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. Okay? At tumaas na nan ang ating uh, viewership per minute, okay? Uh, 107,000 average viewership per minute. And yung ating um, um, weekend shows, 768,000 sa morning slot and 869,000 po ang nanonood sa ating, sa ating afternoon slot. Ganun pa man, ang ating Starbucks, which is the digital uh, copy of our library, patuloy nating um, pinapalaganap yan sa buong Pilipinas. Meron na tayong mga 5,635 sites across the country, and ang maganda dyan, inadapt na yan ng DepEd, kasama na yan sa kanilang learning commons, at napakalaga na meron tayong contribution from the science sector, especially sa panahon ng pandemic. Uh, palagay ko, nabanggit mo ng lahat, pero siguro if you will be asked to uh, identify yung top five na uh, masasabi nating uh, top uh, achievements or highlights of accomplishments ng STII during the last uh, five and a half years, ano ang mga ito, Director Richard? Alright, unang-una, Sekboy, gusto kong ipahiwating na pinaiting, pinaganda natin ang physical facilities ng STII. Alright? So, Meron tayong mas maganda na po ang library natin ngayon. Meron tayong dalawang studio, dati-dati isa lang. Okay? Ang mga cubicles natin, working spaces natin are much better now. Okay? We even have a mother and child care center in the institute. At hindi lang po yun, you know. The organizational structure is uh, bolstered by our getting the prime HRM uh, maturity level two. So bronze level na po tayo dyan. And that ensures that we are able to hire the right people, na competent for the tasks. We're able to uh, 
allow them to grow through learning and development interventions. We're able to um, manage their performance, all right? And also we're able to recognize the good work that they do. Hindi lang po yun. We initiated na dapat kasama tayo sa national priority plan ng NEDA. Ano po itong plano na ito? Ito yung plano para kung merong nagdo-donate sa ating mga programa, ay they can uh, avail of tax uh, deductions, all right? So, kasama po sa NEDA, na national priority plan ang ating dalawang programa Starbucks five years na po yan dyan naka-generate yan ng 12.8 million pesos worth of donations ang GOS TV four years na po dyan alright naka-generate ng 7.4 million pesos kasama na ang dalawang bagong Hyundai Starex vans alright okay. hindi lang po yan we were able to like achieve our ISO accreditation and uh, for the three straight years now, the last one, they had um, no non-conformities in their findings and six best practices. Napakagandang recognition po yan. Maliban dyan, yung ating internal um, IAS, no? internal um, uh, audit system in DOST, it's the basic assessment for internal control systems, rated us the best of 25 when they uh, assessed us last year. Now, yung... Uh, so a sense of pride, para naman masiyahan yung ating mga empleyado, no? a sense of pride that we said, why don't we compete in uh, uh, awards and recognition events like yung Anvil for the, the PR Society of the Philippines or yung Quill Awards from the International Association of Business Communicators. Sino buka natin yan? So umpisa, hesitant pa sila, but we went through it. And we have been winning Anvil's Quill Awards, even the Gandingan Award from UPLB. All right, sabi ng anila. And lastly, pala yung CMMA, yung Catholic Mass Media Awards. We recognized our best feature story from an, an article which appeared in S and T Post. Napakaganda po niyang recognition. Sabi ng anila, happy wife, happy life. But happy employees equals best public service. Diba? So, yun po ang ating sinubukang gawin. Ang DOST report, sabi na po sinabi natin, okay, um, da, nagiging ano po yan, nagiging link para yung ating mga media friends sa panahon ng pandemia ay hindi na nila kailang pumunta sa isang press conference. Doon na sila nakikinig sa report ni Sec Boy at nakikilala nila yung ating mga panauhin. Alright? At doon sila kumukuha ng kanilang mga kwento na lumalabas naman sa um, the, kanilang mga pages or social media pages, etc., etc. So napakalaking bagay po ng DOST report, Sec Boy. Pagpatuloy natin ito. Napakalaking babel po ang ginagampanan ng DOST STII sa pagtupad ng layunin ng DOST which is to bring science closer to the people. At very exciting po ang taong 2022 para sa DOST STII dahil ipagdiriwang po nila ang kanilang ikatatlong po't ibang anibersaryo. Director Richard, ano-ano po ang inyong mga bagong plano sa mga susunod na taon na lalo makapabuputi o makabuputi para sa ating mga kababayan? Alright, so naumpisa na natin mga ilang programa na maganda naman. Lalo pa nating paigtingin yan. Alright? Yung Starbucks natin, ngayon, nakaproduce tayo ng tatlong mobile apps. Meron pang isa coming up within the first uh, semester this year. And more to come, okay? Kasi yun na po talaga ang direksyon natin. Online. DOS TV. We are hoping we will have a third studio. It will become a creative media laboratory wherein we can train other communicators within DOST to produce content online and for broadcast purposes. Okay? Yung ating CNC Cat, okay? Uh, we will still be um, uh, airing on CNN for the second quarter in 2022. But beyond that, we're looking at a new show, the science and travel show. Ang tawag nito ay Science Pinas. All right, we're still looking for a, a channel to do that. And we're also working with uh, DOST Mimaropa and the other regional offices to launch Lakas ng Siyensya. Ito ay para sa teleradio, right? To talk about what we are doing, especially in the uh, laylayan ng ating lipunan, okay? In the regional uh, offices and their uh, areas of operation.
Now, we also want to continue to capacitate our DOST communicators. Paano natin gawin yan? Well, we're thinking of dapat meron na tayong second batch of MS DevCom scholars kasi malaking tulong po ito para ma, you know, we feel more confident in doing our job of communicating science for the people. We have also, like, uh, in the final stages of uh, uh, putting down the final uh, nails in the science communication agenda. So hopefully, this will become the framework by which we can uh, together communicate science for the people. And uh, in the future, um, there is a project to put up a the gig science terminal. It will also be a great way to um, to engage our the, the public at large, especially those who are commuting, all right, and introduce them to the world of science, okay? Noon the last uh, visit ni Sec Boy dun sa Angono in June last year, all right, naisip niya na magkaroon tayo ng mobile app for Angono. Uh, pwedeng tumulong ang technology chan, all right? Hindi po natin niya nakakalimutan kasi nga po talaga naman, technology once put into better use to solve our problems in society can help us have a better life ahead. Maraming salamat po, DOST STII Director, Sir Richard P. Burgos, and happy 35th anniversary po sa DOST, STII. Babarikin po natin si Director Richard, maya-maya po lamang. At sa punto ito, makasama naman po natin si Academician Cesar A. Saloma, ang kasalukuyang Editor-in-Chief ng Philippine Journal of Science. Magandang araw po. Uh, magandang araw, uh, Onin. Magandang araw, Secretary Boy and Director Richard. Magandang araw sa iyo, Dr. Cesar, ang, uh, ang Ay, ating, uh, ating editor-in-chief ng Philippine Journal of Science uh, uh, since 2013. Uh, para sa kaalaman ng ating mga taga-subaybay, ang Philippine Journal of Science ang pinakamatandang peer-reviewed journal publication on science sa Pilipinas na nagsimula pa noong 1906. Uh, 1906. At uh, uh, actually ay uh, kumpleto pa tayo ng uh, uh, original uh, may, ano tawag dito? Uh, issues ng Philippine Journal of Science since 1906 at yan ay uh, naka, nasa pag-iingat ng STII. At uh, siguro, uh, of course, uh, alam naman natin si Director Cesar ay eh, bata pa. Mas bata siya sa Philippine Journal of uh, of science. But natutuwa kami dahil uh, uh, pagkatapos na maging uh, Chancellor ng UP Diliman, si, Ch si uh, Dr. Saloma, ay um, uh, pumayag siya na maging editor-in-chief nitong ating uh, uh, peer-reviewed, internationally peer-reviewed uh, journal. Kaya siguro, uh, Dr. Cesar, uh, kung pwede mo lang uh, ipaliwanag sa ating mga taga-subaybay, Ano ba talaga ang purpose, ano, layunin ng Philippine Journal of Science at ano ang kahalagahan nito para sa ating mga Filipino scientists and researchers? Okay. Uh, maraming salamat, uh, Secretary Boy. Uh, sa, sa, opportunity, sa opportunidad na mag-serve ng Editor-in-Chief sa Philippine Journal of Science. So, ang uh, in context po, Ang, the, ang, ang purpose ng scientific research is to publish in a peer-reviewed journal. That is from a practical point of view. So kinoconsider po natin ngayon na ang isang research project ay successful with respect to the uh, proposal kung, kung ang kanyang mga results ay ma-publish ma, ma sa isang peer-reviewed journal. Sin ano po ba ang anong scientific findings po ba ang mag-qualify para ma ma-approve na i-publish sa isang peer-reviewed journal. Kailangan po na ang sa, ang research findings ay original. Ibig pong sabihin hindi pa na-publish before in another journal. Pangalawa, kailangan po na itong scientific findings na ito ay interesting and appealing at least to the scientific community. At pangatlo, kailangan scientifically meritorious. Ibig sabihin, ang nire-report ay ma-evaluate ma 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 kung gaano ka-accurate at gaano ka-precise ang kanyang findings. So, ang Philippine Journal of Science is a peer-reviewed journal. At marami pong peer-reviewed journals 
sa mundo. Pero ang Philippine Journal of Science ay may particular na role para sa ating bansa, para sa ating Philippine Science Community. Una, kung ito ay successful nating ma-operate through time, magpapakita ito ng kakayahan ng domestic scientific community to self-regulate and to learn towards a better future. Now, lais ko rin pong banggitin, Secretary Boy, na uh, ang ating bansa nangangailangan ng technological innovation to solve our problems. Uh, ngunit, mahirap pong ma-achieve ang isang ang, uh, ang mga inovasyon na yan kung wala tayong bagong kaalaman. Dahil technological innovation is a product of the successful application of new scientific knowledge. So, sino po bang magsabi na ang isang scientific knowledge ay bago? Ito po ang mga experts or peers. So, the, the process of going through technological innovation is kailangan pong may bagong, bagong scientific knowledge na, maki, na na-cleared at nag appear sa isang scientific journal. The, the Philippine Journal of Science is a multidisciplinary journal. Dapat lang po, ibig sabihin, ito ay tumatanggap o nagwi-welcome ng mga submission galing sa iba't ibang fields ng science, technology, engineering, at mathematics. So, uh, hindi ito specialized journal. So, uh, makikita natin dito through time paano nag-grow ang scientific community in terms of the number of researchers and scientists as well as the number of peer reviewers sa ating bayan na mahirap makita sa ibang journal na foreign. So maraming salamat, uh, Secretary Boy. Dr. Saloma, taong 2013 po na maupo kayo bilang editor-in-chief ng Philippine Journal of Science. Ano-ano po ang mga pagbabago na ganap sa PJS sa nakalipas na siyang na taon? At ano po ang ilang highlights o milestones ng PJS na mababahagi niyo po sa amin? Ang pinaka-importante nating na-accomplish uh, uh, together with the publisher, ano, nais kong banggitin, ang publisher ng Philippine Journal of Science is the Department of Science and Technology. No? And uh, which is also a major funding uh, agency of government. So, uh, ang pinaka para sa atin, ang pinaka-critical is tumaas ang number of manuscript submissions na natanggap natin sa Philippine Journal of Science through time. For example, noong 2010, ang natanggap natin ay 37 submissions lang sa buong taon ng 2010. Noong, uh, ngayong, uh, noong 2021, ini-expect natin na mga 350 ang manuscript submissions, mga 60% dyan ay mapapublish because they satisfy our, our publication requirement of peer review. No? So, nais ko rin banggitin na ang Philippine Journal of Science ay mas nauna pang na-establish kasi sa University of the Philippines, Secretary Boy. So, yun. So, ang tanong natin, kung bakit ba nag increase ang uh, tumataas ang submission? Indication po yan ng trustworthiness ng Philippine Journal of Science sa kanyang pag-decide, sa kanyang pag-evaluate kung anong research uh, results ang ipapublish nito. So it's an indication of how fair we are. Not, not just the editor in chief but also the publisher. So uh, ginawa and uh, um, na-achieve natin yan dahil nag nagiging clear ano ang requirements para mag-submit, nagiging clear sa mga contributors paano ma-publish ang ilang journal, ano ang ano ang criterion. No? So lahat po ng ating pinapublish na uh, research articles ay dumaan sa peer review process. Walang exception po. At nais ko rin magpapasalamat na uh, 
ang publisher natin na represented by the office of the secretary and the office of the director ay uh, hindi sila nag-intervene sa decision kung anong mga scientific uh, reports ang lalabas. Critical po ito dahil on the other hand, on the other side, funding agency ang DOST. So, ina-avoid natin yung potential conflict of interest. So, uh, yan siguro yung ating uh, pinaka-critical na achieve. Hindi lang po, Philippine Scientific Community, if you look at our publications, tumataas din po ang galing sa Thailand, sa Indonesia, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, ibang bans, mga neighborhood natin. So, ano pa mga naka-plano natin for the coming years, uh, uh, Dr. Cesar, for the Philippine Journal of uh, Science? Okay po. Uh, Una, um, ikap, ma, ma, ma continue sana natin na at least for the next few years, uh, uh, walang bayad ng face charges ang, <laughs> ang pag-publish sa Philippine Journal of Science, Secretary Boy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, hindi tayo nag, uh, no, no, malaking bagay ito sa ating mga batang researcher kasi mahal ang publication charges. No. Pangalawa, ating... Uh, Sinusubuka at uh, we are working very hard na ma-expand natin ang mga databases na nag-cover ng mga research reports sa Philippine Journal of Science ang, uh, so that ang ating citations, ibig sabihin exposure, ay uh, tataas. At uh, sana ito maka, makatulong din na maging mas maraming particularly PhD scholars na makapag-graduate through the scholarship of TUST by publishing their work in the Philippine Journal of Science. So, yun ang uh, pinaka-critical nating gusto ma-achieve. Uh, uh, may, may mga issues din. Improvin natin ang ating digital services para mabilis ang pag-access nito. Uh, at uh, sustainability kasi at the end of the day magre-retire tayo at uh, hindi na po uh, may, kahit I mean ang, ang physical capability ng mga tao ay talagang ano secretary boy may ending na masustain natin ito kahit hindi na tayo sa helm nito Dr. Saloma saan po ba maaari ma-access ng ating mga kabayan ang Philippine Journal of Science Ang Philippine Journal of Science is a uh, is an online journal so mayroon itong homepage na hino-host ng Department of Science and Technology. Uh, Ma-search naman kaagad ito sa Google Search, Philippine Journal of Science. Uh, uh, lahat ng, uh, lahat ng uh, pertinent information on submission and, and being able to publish ay makikita sa ating, uh, makikita sa ating website uh, hosted by the Science and Technology Information Institute. Uh, mayroon din po tayong presence sa Facebook na mga one year na tayong nandoon. Uh, Minimaintain niya ng ating editorial office at uh, uh, inasahan natin nakakatulong din yan sa pag-widen ng exposure ng mga DOST initiatives. Uh, uh, mayroon din tayong printed version ng journals natin pero limited lang po dahil medyo mahal mag-publish ngayon. So we only publish, uh, the Philippine Journal of Science publishes only four issues out of six in printed matter. No? Uh, uh, at limited lang sa 500, so pinapadala natin ito sa mga libraries. Ang priority natin. At yung mga, uh, at yung mga nag, sa corresponding authors ng published na journal, yun lang ang kanilang remembrance ng kanilang, uh, mayroon silang uh, memorabilia ng kanilang publication. Siyempre, hindi po natin palalagpasin ang pagkakataon ito na isa lang ang ating mga panuhin sa diretsang tanong. Sabi po natin isang no holds bar na diskusyon. At sasagutin nila ito gamit lamang ang isang salita o isang parilala sa loob ng isang minuto. Ito ang straight forward.
Kailan po masasabing science is for the people? I think pag uh, meron na tayong herd immunity, <laughs> if we can reach up to 70% of the population getting an idea about science and uh, technology and innovation information, I think we will have uh, already reached that point when we can say science has gotten to the people. Para, para sa akin, may kailangan mag-develop ng metric. Pero basically, we, are, we succeed in doing science for the people kung... Uh, makita natin sa indicators, for example, ng support nila sa vaccination drive, sa support nila sa mga iba-ibang initiatives. No, otherwise, para sa akin po maging slogan lang po yon. Uh, pero kailangan talagang pero constant monitoring tayo, na measures. Isang salita ng lalarawan sa DOST. Leader in science, technology, innovation. It's the primary uh, agency for supporting scientific research and development in the country. Ano po ang inyong masasabi tungkol sa fake news? Fake news? Madaling malaman yan. <laughs> Just check the right uh, websites. Uh, honestly, hindi ko, hindi ko malaman ko anong fake news. Ang sa akin lang, inaccurate at accurate na news. Isang bagay na nais nice niyong sabihin sa mga mga Pilipino. With science, we move ahead faster and better. Kailangan natin, kailangan ng mga Pilipinong ma-accept na, dap, na tayo, tayo mismo mga Pilipino ang mag-set, mag, mag-craft ng ating destiny sa scientific research and development. Kailangan self-determination. Ano ang kahalagahan ng science and technology information sa ating maumuhan? Get the wrong information and you might die. Para sa akin po, uh, the most uh, re- uh, reliable and effective solution to our problems uh, normally ay evidence-based, no? scientific evidence. Mahirap gawin pero ang fruits nito ay peerless din, walang katumbas. All right. Maraming salamat po muli sa ating mga panahonin. Sec Boy, baka may nais pa kayong babatid sa ating mga taga-subaybay. Well, actually, una, pasasalamat muna kay Director Richard Burgos at kay Dr. Cesar Saloma sa pagpapaunlak nila sa ating interview ngayon. At uh, siguro meron ako mensahe pero para sa kanila. Kay Director Burgos, unang-una, uh, papaano kaya ma-involve ang Science and Technology Information Institute Uh, sa science literacy para sa mga ordinaryong Pilipino. Wag, wag na yung mga estudyante, kundi yung mga halimbawa, yung mga matatanda na or adults na, na napaka-babaw pa ng kaalaman tungkol sa uh, science. Siguro pwede pagtulungan ng Science uh, and Technology Information Institute at ng uh, Science Education Institute. Pangalawa, uh, ano lang, idea lang, pwede kayang yung ating mga practicing media people who are devoted to science and technology matters, pwede rin kaya silang mabigyan ng parang isang formal academic program. Wag naman, hindi naman siguro master's degree o kahit isang diploma or program na para sila naman ay ma-enrich ma- ma- din yung kanilang uh, Uh, practice or yung kanilang uh, profession. Ano? Uh, and then for uh, Philippine Journal of Science, ang aking lang wish sana ay magpatuloy pa si D- D- Dr. S- uh, Cesar Saloma sa kanyang paglilingkod dito sa ating Philippine Journal of Science. Sabi niya, wala daw, wala daw uh, fees na chinacharge ang PJS doon sa mga napapublish. Ang masasabi ko lang, ang uh, pagiging editor-in-chief ng Journal of Science wala din naman silang na, na uh, hindi sila yayaman <laughs> and then finally i just want to uh, hope that uh, the initiatives in our uh, information dissemination efforts will uh, encourage more uh, uh, Filipinos at different levels to to be stakeholders in science uh, uh, from the young people uh, to uh, the businessmen uh, to uh, teachers to government uh, workers etc kasi the more more uh, 
uh, people are uh, uh, involved, okay? Uh, whether as users, adapters, or uh, producers, for example, of goods that involve technology, uh, this I think will uh, do good for our country. Maraming salamat. Salamat po, Sikboy, sa aming pong pagbabalik. Sasagutin ni Sikboy at ng ating mga panahin ang tanong ng bayan sa pagbabalik uyan ng DOST Report. Questions are in. It's time for Itarong Mo Kay Sekboy. Para sa unang katanungan, mula po kay Gabriela Baron ng Manila Bulletin. Para kay Dr. Saloma, ano po ang top 3 best research paper published ng Philippine Journal of Science? Masabi po ba ninyo, mayroon ito naging impact sa science community particular sa ating mga Filipino researchers at kung meron, ano po ito? Um, Gabriela, ma nahirap sa aking sabihin kung ano yung three best pub publications sa Philippine Journal of Science dahil ako yung uh, as editor-in-chief uh, I, I, na, 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 nandun yung authority sa akin to approve the publication. So lahat naman sila ay satisfies the requirement uh, originality, uh, appeal, uh, novelty, and scientific merit. Pero uh, with regards to, uh, masasabi natin siguro, relative relevance kasi iba't iba naman ang mga fields, makikita po natin yan sa mga publications na nirecognized sa every year ng, uh, during the annual scientific meeting of the National Academy of Anthology. Uh, mayroon po tayong best uh, uh, scientific publications uh, in uh, domestic journals. So uh, more than 50% of those recognized were published in the Philippine Journal of Science in different areas from, from uh, the physical sciences to the chemist to the social sciences and so on. Ang susunod naman po ay wala kay Bel Surara ng Radyo Aguila Net 25. Ano po, ano-ano po ang plano o balakin po ninyo, Director Richard, para sa media for the next administration para maging mas malakas ang pagtutunungan ng DOST at media? Media para sa next administration, alright? Ang, ang akala ko at naasahan ko na yung ating media covering science, the, the science beat in the current administration, sila pa rin yung patuloy na mag-cover sa atin. Pero inaasahan ko rin na mayroon tayo mga bago at mga bata na mga media personalities who will begin to report about science and how it's impacting their lives. Na? Kailangan natin ng boses ng kabataan talaga moving forward. Ang tanong nito ay mula naman kay Ace Fernandez ng DZL. Bakit sa kabila po ng marami accomplishments ng DOST, ay balik pa rin ang pondong inilalaan ng ahensya sa promotion ng mga gawain ng DOST. Oo. Nag <laughs> Nagsuggest na nga ako, tutulungan namin ang DBM kung paano sila mag-allocate ng budget. Eh. Sabi namin, uh, tutulungan namin kayo kung gusto nyo gumawa ng uh, uh, model no? or uh, formula para sa allocation. Kasi parang... Uh, uh, parang hindi, hindi considered yung iba-ibang factors in the allocation. Parang sinusunod lang nila yung former distribution percentages. Okay? So, uh, I, I think uh, malaki ang papel talaga ng DBM. 
Mga kapatid, salamat kong ulit sa inyong pagsumaybay. Mas marami pang balita mula sa mundo ng gam at teknolohiya. Ang ating pag-uusapan kaya tutup lamang kayo tuwing Mernes alas 4 ng hapon dito sa DOS TV Facebook page at YouTube channel. Palagi rin tumutok sa mga websites at FB pages ng ating mga agensya ng DOST para sa latest happenings nila at mga events tungkol sa iba't ibang R&D projects at mga inovasyon. Bisitahin din po ang DOST Philippines FB page para di mahuli sa mga nakalinyang mga activities ng DOST. Ako po si Olin Miranda. Ito ang mga balita may kinalaman sa agam, teknoloy at inovasyon, hati ng pagbabago para sa maunlad na mundo. At ako muli si Secretary Fortunato Boy de la Peña ng DOST. Uh, salamat sa inyong uh, pagsubaybay.